What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the third episode of the FC Mom Podcast. I'm Chris Daly, joined here. I'm a Lucas Francis. He's Lucas Francis, joined here by Lucas Francis and the three coaches here for FC Mammoth. Mine is Seamus, but uh, we are honored to have the coaches in real life um, on the show today. So thank you guys all for coming and two former players as well. So without further ado, if you guys could just give a little introduction on yourselves, who you are, and um, just tell us a bit about yourself. I'm John Killick, the head coach. Um, I'm from Teesside, England. Most people can relate to Middlesbrough or Newcastle or Sunderland. I've been here 23 years. Um, you need anything else other than that? Yeah, I mean, no, I, I think that was uh, perfect. And now, uh, Pio, you just uh, the mic and... My name is uh, Pio Scandal Morello. I'm from Naples, Italy. I came here when I was about five years old, and that's pretty much it. So Ooh. far, I'm 25 years old and looking for a good season uh, ahead with FC Monmouth. Nice. Reese. <laughs> My name's Reese. Entering my third year now with FC Monmouth. I come from Wigan, England. Uh, yeah, similar to PL. I'm excited to get going, see what it's all about. Yeah, well, I'm excited um, for the season and, of course, to see you guys all back here with the club. So, just without further ado, you all mentioned you're not, none of you guys are from America. So, um, I guess we could start with Reese and go down in the line here, but when did you come to the United States to play soccer for GCU and I guess how did that opportunity come about? So I joined five years ago, so I entered my freshman year in 2019, um, played five years there. So how it works is, so I had contacts out here anyway, so I just messaged one of those, see what schools were like good was the best place for me, found the best fit, started speaking to the coaches, just went on from there, so, like scholarship, all that stuff, uh, majors, and then that's it, you just find what's best for you, find the best fit, and you just go ahead with it. Were you nervous at all to come to the US? It's a bit of a change of pace from Wigan to you know GCU. <laughs> You're right, it is a change of pace. Um, is that nervousness, and you're also excited, because it's just a whole new life, like new chapter, but yeah, nerves definitely, but you're settling, you're settling fast being on the team. What was like the difference between like playing overseas in the UK and just playing in America? Um, I'd say college especially is fast, like it's very fast, like um, the way I describe it, it's similar to like a basketball game, like it's constant up, down, up, down. Um, but yeah, I think that's the that's the biggest one. It's definitely faster. Yeah, very nice. Now, John, um, for you, when did you come to the U.S.? I know you have a family here now and everything. So it's actually uh, coming up 24 years. I will have been here, so I spent more time in the U.S. than I spent in England. Um, I, like Reese, was exploring uh, scholarship opportunities. I played in England, and um, I ended up taking a job to come over here and then just got into the life, started working, met my wife, and here we are 24, 24 years later, um, yeah. you know, um, but. but. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about this, did you ever think that, I mean, when you came, you know, 24 years ago, you mentioned, did you ever think that it would be to where it is now, you'd still be here um, so many years later? That's a good question. I mean, I was 19, uh, but just turned 20. Um, I didn't have any thought of what I was doing when I was 21, 22, never mind where we are now. But um, you, you come here and you're interested in, in football and soccer and you, um, life just takes you where you're supposed to go and uh, very happy where we are now. And I went away from football for about 15 years and then I came back into it with FC Monmouth and uh, that's five years ago now so yeah very nice um and now P.O. for you you mentioned i mean you're a bit younger when you moved here i just learned that P.O.'s dad actually owns my go-to pizzeria <laughs> right around the corner from my house so um if you could just talk about uh, your heritage your family and then of course you know yeah yeah the naples pizza i guess yeah, you guys ab absolutely uh, i moved here from naples italy a small town uh, in naples called monte di brogida when i was about five years old my father used to be a cargo ship captain so he used to sail all over Europe all over Africa and you know transport 
uh, transport goods all across Europe, Africa, Asia, all those good places like that. And eventually he realized that that wasn't the life that he wanted to pursue. Uh, he wanted a better life for his kids. Also, he was away from home for a long time throughout the years. So he'd be gone for nine, 10 months. And sometimes he would come home and me and my older brother wouldn't even recognize him. So he had to figure something out. And uh, we had a lot of family already here when I was younger. So he thought the best option was to come to the United States and give his kids a better life. And uh, he settled here, we settled here. And he opened up his own pizzeria and we've been here for about 20 years now. So yeah. that's pretty much it, living the American dream. <laughs> <laughs> like what got you like into soccer like were you always playing since you were little or so i actually did not like soccer up until the age of eight uh the age of eight it was about 2006 and we all know that was the greatest world cup ever because italy won of course <laughs> no but uh yeah uh that world cup got me liking soccer a lot uh i used to always fight with my brother growing up he's nine years older than me so being at home and him watching soccer games and I wanted to watch cartoons when I was younger, you know, we were always like fight. So when that summer came along, I just remember, I was in Italy for it. And I just remember like seeing the passion and just what it meant to the people, you know, living through it each, every game, like in the piazza and watching how people reacted and how, how passionate they just were about it. And I kind of just fell in love. Like, I'll be honest with you, when they won it on the last penalty kick, I had no idea what was going on because I was still a kid. Yeah. I didn't know, I didn't even know it was the World Cup. I later on realized after, about two weeks later, after being again so obsessed with it, that we just won a major tournament. And I just remember, I remember my no-no uh, and my brother. I remember the final penalty being scored and my brother just getting up and started running to my Nona's house. And I was just like, what's going on here? You had old guys flinging chairs and people jumping in fountains and it was just an awesome experience. And I just knew then and there that I was obsessed with that sport because <laughs> yeah. of the passion it brings. So yeah, That's pretty awesome. much it. I know, you're probably a Napoli fan. I imagine I talk at Andy's, you know, about Napoli to those guys. So, yeah. I guess, uh, what was it, last season? Uh, last season, yeah. Kavart and, um, you know, then? Napoli. So, yeah, how was that? We're speaking of, you know, club teams and national teams winning. I mean, how awesome was it to see Napoli finally lift the trophy, especially after Maradona had passed away? Uh, it, was, it, was, uh, it was definitely an amazing thing to see. I mean, especially when I started liking Napoli, which was about 2006, so my brother and my mom are Juventus fans, and my dad is a Napoli fan, so I kind of just went with what my dad yeah. liked. So he got me into Napoli, and uh, in 2006, 2007, they were already on the come up again because they got relegated. Uh, they went bankrupt, went all the way mm -hmm. down to Serie C, and then worked their way up. So we were in Serie B in 2006, 2007, and um, so I started liking them there, and then seeing them go from Serie B to Serie A, and going from over the years, 10th place, then 8th, then sixth and playing Europa League and Champions League and then finally winning you know a league after 33 years is just un, like an indescribable feeling and probably the best feeling ever just yeah. goosebumps I'm, I'm all, not really all around a, talking about fan. it right now yeah. I mean that, that was just <laughs> such a fun team to watch last yeah. year and uh, Spalletti and everybody like that was just such a exciting attacking team but now we could get into uh, to John here and uh, you mentioned what, it was five years ago you joined FC Mammoth. So how did your opportunity with FC Mammoth come about, and why did you, you know, just take up this opportunity? So about five years ago, I um, I was in the food industry, and I stopped working in the food industry, and um, I was coaching in the youth system with my own kids. <coughs> And a friend of mine asked me if I was involved <coughs> with the semi-professional team setting up in Red Bank. Um, it was actually Stavos's brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. um, and then I didn't know anything about it at the time. Um, I reached out and long story short, um, they offered me a position. Now the coaching positions have been filled already. So they created an equipment manager. So I started as equipment manager and uh, it was more for me personally to do um, just to get back involved with, with, with the game at the adult level because obviously we're involved with the kids. And then once the season started, I kind of found out how much I enjoyed it again. And being around the guys that were very similar level, very similar kind of um, abilities as what I was when I was back in England, uh, obviously it's 20 years ago at this point, um, I kind of 
realized what my passion was again and uh, you know I spent the time being equipment manager it was very humbling um, because when I was the same age as these guys somebody somebody was cleaning the laundry for me every I just walked into the locker room and my my uniform was hanging up I put it on and I go on the field and the balls were there the cones were there um, and then finish we get showered we go into the, the 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 clubhouse afterwards and everything was just put on for you and you just kind of when you're in the moment you just assume that that happens automatically you don't think about it fast forward 20 years to me putting the dirty socks in the in the laundry bag and taking the uniforms to the laundry and then hanging them up so like I said when I say it was quite humbling it was it was very nice to realize that somebody did that for me 20 years ago and um, it got to the point where the guys would help to try and put the laundry in the bag and I'm like this is my job <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you do what you do on the field and then we'll take care of it um, and then seeing Woods coach Woods was phenomenal working with Woods Brian was such a great character such a good coach and it kind of um, led me back into kind of wanting to get involved with the uh, adult game again and uh, he made me assistant coach second year and kiss Yeah, yeah you know? well, so like what was it like then transitioning into like the head coach role, like going out on that first game day, like were you nervous or? It's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> um, and that's, you know, we, being the assistant with Brian for three years, I think, um, he took a lot of the pressure away from us. So as assistant coaches, we would just get the guys ready to go, whatever the, the, the tactics were, the formation were, Woods would come up with the strategy, we'd kind of help implement it. When you're when you're um, when you're steering the ship, it's it's a whole different um, level of stress, and uh, you know I think because we want to take it on to us, you know, head coach you're responsible for everything. That you're the one that they look at, you're the the one that carries the record. You know, if you're, I think we had five ties, I think, um, and that's like I remember that the guys who got five ties that season the players they don't they don't remember in five ten years but so you kind of you're taking all that responsibility onto yourself and um, that was something that was 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 very different and uh, you know last year I started to, to learn how to balance it and this year hopefully um, we'll put more in the win column um, but it's uh, you know everything's easy with success but it was it was stressful the first year my uh, like first year in charge, first year in adult, like being at the head of the adult soccer, and um, yeah, it was, it was. I remember trying to get that first win, <laughs> and it just wouldn't come. And we were winning, we're winning, winning, and then we'd make a mistake, and we'd end up with a tie, or we'd make a mistake, and we'd end up with a, a bad call or whatever. And you know, I remember getting that first win. I think we only had one win that season, but it yeah, was just I, kind I of last, like the last yeah, home game of the season it was, or something. Yeah, yeah, and it was just kind of. But that was like. A major kind of lift off my off my shoulders and then I started to enjoy it a little bit more and uh, the, the longer that that non-winning streak went the tighter and tighter it got so that was a big uh, a big relief for me personally um, and then obviously second season we were uh, I think we were better on paper absolutely better on paper but we just didn't kind of reach our potential so that brings a whole different level of uh, stress yeah, um, definitely. And just before we get to Reese here, too, uh, one thing I noticed about FC Monmouth, and, and now that you're the head coach, I think you can appreciate it. Obviously, we're in the office, and it's something um, I know James is trying to work towards. is like a 1,000 people coming into the gates. But yeah. um, for at least for the Keystone, I feel like FC Monmouth always, and I've been supporting the team since actually it was um, first founded. And I was a sixth grader, and now I'm a senior in high school. So it's definitely yeah. you know been like my whole middle school and high school life has been – a part of it has been FC Mammoth. So um, how cool is it just to have so many fans come in t uh, to the stadium, especially for, you know, like a fourth division soccer team and to be the head coach in front of such a, a great crowd? That is one of my favorite things, um, and it really is. And, and not for me. I don't want people there to come and see, like, me and my team. That's not what I'm talking about. What I mean is, is like, and, and Reese and Peel get this a little bit more, is in England – we have that culture everywhere so yeah. you go to there's so many levels of, of professional teams that you know the the, the second division now used to, or the fourth tier now is, is still professional they're they're pulling six seven eight nine thousand people and you know there's there's ten of them ten of them teams within uh, a, a 30 mile radius if you will so 
the fact that and FC Marmot does a phenomenal job at this and um, the, the fact that we're kind of getting a little taste of that it does kind of remind you of what it feels like to be at home when people are you know the Saturday is they're, they're going to get up they're going to do whatever three o'clock they go into the match and then five o'clock they're leaving and there's there's five thousand people want to do that and they're pl going to watch players that you'll never hear about and these are professional players that they're not on espn they're not on sky that but these are professional players and that's what they do and there's that whole little kind of culture um i think we have a subculture here and and i think fc marmoth is kind of tapping into that mm -hmm. um and we are creating that amongst us and, and the people who are involved kind of get that feeling and they enjoy it you know chris sixth grade sixth grade yeah. you know um and and look forward to the season you know um the, the stuff that goes off off the field what you guys are doing it, it helps create that little culture that we that we, that we want as soccer fans that's kind of I'll be a little controversial. It's suppressed by the other sports in this country, um, but it, it it does give you that good feeling that we want, and um, you know. So that's that's what like really I like, you know. And it's emphasized when I think it's just me. The away teams come to us, and the players walk off the field, and they're like. We want we want to play here every week. We don't do this, you know. We go to Hershey, we go to even the likes of Motown. Have a great team, but they're not providing the experience that we have. The players that we have come back because they love playing in front of people. People coming to watch you do what you want to do is phenomenal. You know, it makes it's a, it's a very good feel good factor, and um, it's not only the players and the coaches that are providing that. It's you guys. It's James. It's all the people that came with the ride, you know, the interns, the, you know, the, the owners, they're creating this kind of jazz around us. And, you know, we get to reap the benefits because we're right in the middle of it uh, on Saturdays. But it, it's, it's, uh, and it's, it's infectious as well. So um, that's definitely, yeah, tip my hat to everybody who does that. Yeah, and um, I think the def like the closest thing we have, at least, I always watch uh, like Copa 90 and all these YouTube channels about, um, where, I mean, where you guys are from pretty much about all the, lower league teams I'd say it's like the blue claws and baseball growing up but you know for me like I like baseball I watched the Yankees yesterday but it's a boring sport in my yeah. opinion you know I find it pretty slow and I can appreciate baseball and like the talent because I actually worked for the blue claws as a bat boy and like I mean these guys are you know some great athletes like yeah. there's no doubt about it but you know as a soccer fan I want to see more like soccer teams and um, there's a lot in uh, the USL League 2 and now um, the MPSL which is cool to see but for Reese I know you ha it's been a while since you talked, so uh, we could give you the mic, and um, if you could just talk about your last couple of years at um, Georgian Court, how it's been treating you, and then how you got introduced to FC Monmouth as a player, and I know it's a loaded question, but why are you kind of stepping away from uh, being a player and becoming um, a, a coach now for this season? Um, so Georgian Court, so the five years there, definitely fun, like I enjoyed my time there. Um, yeah, it was definitely something new, like you said, coming there 19, different country, different chapter, like you learn a lot straight away, especially being a freshman, you're in the locker room with 24, 20, 23, 24 year olds, like you have to grow up fast. Um, so yeah, you put you put in a spot where it's it's time to grow up. Um, what was the what was the next part of oh, the question? Yeah, I mean, how were you introduced um, to FC Monmouth and then why are you, you know, you were a captain and a great player, yeah. but why are you kind of stepping away to become a coach as well? Um, so I got introduced two years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, two years ago <clears throat> uh, by one of the assistant coaches back then. Um, he just mentioned to us that I was actually on all day in Miami at the time. He gave me a call saying um, there's a tryout <clears throat> for FC Monmouth, didn't know anything about it. Um, went down, loved it. That's when I met John, PO, all of them lot. And straight away I was like, yeah, I want to be a part of it. Um, since then, played the first season. That was a, another learning curve, like completely different, um, say, style to the college style. That was more of a <clears throat> slower, you know what I mean? Um, and then second year, Second year we started getting into the groove of it, like started to understand it more. And then this year we are we're expecting big things this year. Um the part about stepping back as a player, so just in the fall, like playing with Georgian Court, snapped my collarbone. So I was still going through the rehab there and I'd have conversations with John. It's just one of those like, is it worth the risk of rushing back into it, doing it again? 
Um, and it's one of those like coaching. I've always had, always had like uh, interest in coaching. Started doing the youth stuff, and it's one of those that like, I want to start getting more hours in now with the adult stuff. Start to make some mistakes. Hopefully not costly ones, but make some mistakes in there. Uh, start to find my feet with the adults game. That's something something I do have a big interest in. So, uh, so season have it hasn't all. The season obviously hasn't started yet, but like, what's the transition been like from like player to coach now? Um, so we had the tryouts. Tryouts was one of those where it was like, I have to take a step back. Like, see, the boys are playing. It's one of those that I'd love to get involved, but it's one of those that I can't. Like, I've got a new responsibility. I've got a new role, and it's just remaining professional. You know what I mean? Like having, having that sense of responsibility where, like. I'd love to have a laugh and a joke, but now I'm a member of staff. Like I got to do things properly, and it's just having that, yeah, that new responsibility. Yeah, and um, speaking of that, a lot of players are coming back. So, I mean, I know they know you as a friend, right? They yeah. know you as a teammate. But now, how is it that they know you as a coach? Do you think, uh, you know, how how hard is that for you in that process? Because I mean, I'm sure it's definitely um, a difficult one to navigate. I mean, yeah, it'll be it'll be difficult, but the thing is, like, they understand. They understand the new role. They understand like my passion in coaching, and it's one of those like we all have the same goal. We all want to win, and it's one of those like we either jump on the same bus, like we all go and win, or we have like the outliers, if you know what I mean. But they understand like what we're doing, like, and the goal. So I don't think it'll be yeah. too much of a yeah. Um, and uh, just for all you guys now we're gonna go down the line this is kind of like the the question everybody was talking about before though and uh P.O. I guess we can wait for you for last so you can think about it some more but uh what's been your favorite uh moment with FC Mammoth? I was actually just looking back at my my own like announcing highlights and uh, it was when you like chipped the keeper I'm like <laughs> forgot to rescore that goal so I know you've had a lot of great times and great memories so what's your if you had to choose number one um that goal that goal was up there um, but I say the one which comes to my head straight away is the Philly Union game. Like at the end with all the kids, like the atmosphere, it was just a good day. You know what I mean? Like it was an horrible match to play in. Like just sat back, we had to defend, defend, defend. But the yeah, part of the bus. But no, that was, that day was good. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Yeah. Wanna go? John? I was going <laughs> to say the same one. Um, obviously the the Union. I'll bring something else. But the Union was. Um, it was a phenomenal experience. That was our biggest attendance, I think. It was a great day, down to 10 men, super dramatic. 1-0 um, against, obviously, the, the development squad of Philadelphia Union. Um, but to put a different, like a, a different spin on it, um, the, the championship game against Motown, um, that was the second best, but the first best was actually the win against Westchester. On the road, underdogs, we were not supposed to beat Westchester that year and um, uh, we were just talking about it before you guys came in and Woodsy's kind of uh, post-game interview summed it up it was they asked what the difference was between Westchester and um, FC Monmouth and he said we had Walter and Walter scored two goals I think that game and we, we kind of went all the way to Westchester and I think we were late or lightning delay or something I can't remember but it was the semi-finals and uh, we, we came out of that 2 nothing, and it was just it was amazing just winning that getting past that semi-final and uh, into the final unfortunately we uh, Motown took us down again but um, hopefully we're going to fix that this year Unfortunately, I mean that's you know I'm always hoping to beat Motown. I think that's kind of everybody's goal. Like <laughs> deep so down, close. yeah, deep down inside, I mean we got a point against them one time, which was the first point we ever got against them. But you know to get three points against uh, the national champions, and they've been to the national championship many times, U.S. Open Cup guys. So that would be nice. But uh, P.O., what's your favorite memory? I know you scored on your debut, you had a lot of a good time. So yeah, if you that, there at that. that would probably have to be my. One was scoring in uh, my debut goal, uh, debut goal against FC Torch in an 11-1 win. Uh, the game where Walter Calderon scored, I think five, like maybe five, five, six, something like that. But yeah, no. Overall, the, that would have to be my greatest memory. And also playing along those guys that season was just practicing and being around that team was. It, it was. It felt like a professional environment. I mean, you had the likes of. Uh, Pizzamenti, Nigro, Walter, Miguel Alves, all those guys just came, you know, all day, majority of them went to Monmouth and they just brought like a professionalism to practices and games in the locker room. So sharing, 
you know, a locker room with them was just an amazing experience as a to, as a player. So, so yeah. like now, like, what are you guys looking forward to this season? Like, we just talked about the past, but like now, this upcoming spring, you got any like predictions or what you hope is going to happen? To make playoffs, definitely. That's uh, the number one goal, and to reach as far as possible this year. Um, I think we have a very good uh, team on paper, but now we have to show it on the field. So, yeah. What's like, are you guys excited for like one specific match or is one match you guys are looking forward to more than any of the other ones? Every single one would be my, uh, <laughs> would be my answer, but one match that I'm really excited to play against is probably against the Jackson Lions, just because I know, you know, majority of them, I know the owner, Mike, I know Brad, I know Connor Hanson, the assistant coach, also the other assistant, Tara. So it's going to be, it's going to be a great experience to, you know, share a field uh, as opponents and, you know, compete. Yeah, I actually it's just exciting. saw Connor the other day. I forget where it was. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you guys are losing this year. But um, <laughs> nah, he's a good guy. And yeah, it's absolutely. It's always, always nice to play against those guys and hopefully hopefully beat them. Um, about John, now what are you looking forward for this year? Um, it's a couple of different things. Actually, the guys probably don't know a lot what's going on off the field. I, like I said, I talked about off the field earlier. Uh, James is, I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag, but James has got some great ideas for like the theme nights and yeah. stuff like that. Um, I'll give a promotion to his golf outing. Okay. <laughs> I know a lot of the guys are looking forward to the golf outing. Um, so on the field, just getting started. Game one, game one is always the best because you've got that, just all that, um, you're just waiting and waiting and waiting to get going and as soon as it get going it's kind of like it's real you know the, the stages for me it the first stage is the tryout then once the tryout happens it's like all right i need another i need another fix i need something then so it's the first day of practice then the first day of practice comes and it's kind of like i need the i need i need more i need more and then first game goes and then depending on how that goes it's either going one way or the other but um first game of the season is always kind of exciting for me I know you just mentioned the golf outing, but out of you three, who do you think is like the best golfer? You? Yeah, uh, <laughs> that, Reese. I think is uh, he's got the most free time. I mean, I have <laughs> three kids plus a job. I don't have time to get out there. Um, soccer golf. Uh, I'll take I'll take my chances. Uh, I'll take my chances too. If, if Connor's <laughs> if Connor's around, I kind of want to rematch. Um, I swear he was cheating. Yeah, and just to divert for a quick second, we actually talked about Connor in our first episode, I believe. I mean, it's really cool. Like he's doing his own podcast. I'm sure you guys yeah, yeah. have seen that, and um, it's pretty awesome to see a guy from you know playing in Red Bank at you know the. Um, Count Basie Field now all of a sudden have the FA Cup run. So how cool is it for you as a coach to to say like, yeah, I coached that guy just this past summer and now. It's phenomenal. He's, he's doing great, and mm -hmm. um, you know he he he, he told, when he told me he was going to England to, uh, to for a tryout, and um, it was just it was great to hear that because that's that's what we want. We want these people to kind of get out of a nest and, and go and expand, you know, and and live and see, you know. And, and what I said to Connor was. If it's six months or if it's eight months or if it's a year of playing soccer in England professionally, they can never take that away from you. You know, hopefully he, he does the right thing and this, that, and the other, and we see him on TV every week, but that doesn't happen for everybody. But just getting that experience, even if it was one month, two months, like I said, a year, you, you play professionally in another country. It's, it's such a great experience. So um, good luck to him. And, you know, his ankle is... Uh, He's recovering from his ankle surgery. I, sh I shoot him messages every so often just to kind of wish him luck, but um, hopefully we see him playing again soon. Yeah, it's awesome. And now, Reese, um, just to go back to the other question we're asking the guys, though, what are you looking forward to the most uh, this season? Um, similar to what John said, just getting going. Like he said, mention the tryouts. Like from tryouts to the first game, like you just have this excitement. Like we have conversations about plans we've got, all that stuff, and it does. It just makes you more and more excited about it, and just getting going, getting the first result in. Like it is, it's going to be good. I'm excited for it. Yeah, awesome. Um, and now, actually, I saw this on Connor's podcast. I kind of stole it, but you know, a lot of people do this, but. Who is the best player you guys individually have each played uh, with and or against? With? Um, hmm. 
I'd say, honestly, a lad from Georgian Court. His name's Josh, Josh Buffington. Mate, he's very good. Like, he's one of those players where, um, like, he doesn't like football. Like, he doesn't like soccer. He's just naturally talented. Like, doesn't train. Like, very rarely trains. I remember one pre-season where <laughs> he was sitting on the side and I was going, why are you not training? He said, I'm sunburnt. Can't train, I'm sunburnt. Like, he loves his bowling. Like, he'd just rather do stuff like that. But, like, naturally talented, Josh Buffington. Just get him to play for us. <laughs> hey, he doesn't like soccer. Yeah. Last him. Last him to do it. What about played against? Played against? Ooh. It's a hard one. That's a tough one. Yeah. Um, played against Greenwood before. Mason Greenwood. Really? Played against him. Um, Name dropper. Yeah. 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 Well, I did that one out. Yeah, I'm like, yeah I'm I was about to say, that yeah, I don't want to be the guy. <laughs> have fun beating that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. There you go. And what was that? Wigan versus Man United? Man United yeah. Dang, back in the day. It's pretty yeah. cool. Tough to follow that one. Yeah, really. Um, <laughs> I, I was actually thinking about this uh, with my son the other day, and uh, where I played back, I mean, it's a long time ago, so. You probably weren't even born when I was playing, um, but the, the league that we played in, it, it brought um, ex-professionals on the after their career, and no. you know guys who were going in and out of the game. Um, and I'm just thinking that you know uh, the most kind of successful player that I played with is a guy called Neil Bishop. Um, he played for Blackpool in the. Um, in the championship and played, he had a 10 year professional career and he was one of the guys that played on our youth team. And so we played with Neil for probably two or three years in the youth system, but it was good to see him at 25. I was in this country, but 25, he uh, had a 10 year professional career. So that was, it was nice to see that. And um, my cousin was probably, he was a uh, professional at Middlesbrough and he was probably uh, one of the best players that never happened um, that I played with. Um, but it, it, there's just so many, and then Riesel back us up on this. We play with hundreds and hundreds of players growing up against yeah. against hundreds and hundreds of players. You know, and, yeah. and like we said, he played against Mason Greenwood in the youth system. There could have been another ten professionals that yeah. nobody knows about playing in the championship that were on that team. Yeah. And there's guys that miss the boat, guys that should have been there and don't get there. And Reese. <laughs> um, it, and it, it's this. It, it's kind of a, a difficult question. Um, and I played against. I couldn't. I couldn't tell you who the best player I played <laughs> against with. There's so many ex-professionals playing in the, the Northern League at the time. Come released from Newcastle, Sunderland, and um, but it's it's a tough question. I'm gonna keep thinking about that one. We get back to you later in the season. Yeah. <laughs> Pio, we're. Before like answering ahead, the question, did you play in college or? I did not. So I stopped playing when I was about right after high school. I played all four years for Manalapan High School varsity, and then tough decision, dumb decision, not to play and further my career in soccer. Unfortunately, I kind of fell out of love with it. Uh, it happens, I guess. I wish I didn't, but can't regret anything in life. So everything also happens for a reason. Um, best player I've, I've played with. I'm gonna shout him out. He's uh, he's in Spain right now. It'd probably have to be Ersin uh, Jerbeshi, one of our former players. Um, I mean, the kid is incredible. I mean, just watching him, the way he moves, he, he makes you look better. I mean, you just ping him a pass and then he does the rest. So <laughs> probably have to go with him against, uh, I'd have to go with uh, Pizzamenti, also another former player. Um, I mean, fast, strong, Gets underneath your skin when you're playing, uh, playing against them. You know, we'll tug your shirt. We'll uh, say some words to you. Great in the air. So against it'd have to be him. Hey, yeah. He's actually a, a soccer trainer of mine back when I was like a kid. And yep. I remember he'd always say, "Unlucky, unlucky," and I'm like, yeah. Not "Everything's unlucky." I mean, yeah. Sometimes it's just poor. You know, like, yeah. it's just terrible. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, he was a good guy, and then I remember him playing for us and against us with Jackson because there was one year before Jackson joined. And you were probably there when yep. um, the partnership happened. Yep. So that was a, season, that yeah. was a good season because you guys mentioned. I'm surprised you guys didn't say Walter because he was uh, phenomenal. And you mentioned those stories about him. And I mean, he was really like unreal for FC Mom back in the day. But there's definitely been a lot of uh, great players to come to our doors. And 
um, hopefully, you know, one of them, a hidden gem is going to come through. Absolutely. This year hopefully, and, hopefully that's um, always does. Yeah, and then just for uh, kind of to wrap up here at all, but why do you guys love FC Monmouth and what just keeps you coming back uh, year by year? I know we touched on this a little bit, but if you can just, you know, maybe summarize it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's, it, it reminds me of, of why I started playing, why I started coaching. You know, we get that. You know the off the field stuff the on the field stuff we're always gonna it's in us we're gonna always yeah. gonna do that but it's kind of you know fc monmouth is is it's it's all the external stuff that it's the podcasts it's the you know the events that the the, the 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 kids that come to watch and you know when i tell the guys when they leave i'm like sign everything and like it doesn't matter just sign everything it's it's it means something to them and and it actually reciprocates to the guys as well you know they they're they're looking to sign stuff. It's a good feeling. Somebody wants yeah. your signature. Somebody wants to take a picture with you. Um, you know, that's that's uh, that's what you know. Was something that jumped out last year real quick. Um, who was it had the uh, the sign? My favorite player, I Heart Reese, and had your number one uh, <laughs> big sign in the There's stand. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, stuff like that. It means that Reese has impacted somebody so much that they want to make a sign and they want to come and they want to get him signed. So that that's what makes me kind of enjoy it here, all those little things. Reese was a lot of the ladies on the signs. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. That's why we put him on staff. Um, 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 I forgot, what was the question? Oh, just, um, just why do you love FC Marmot then? What keeps you coming back year by year? Uh, the buzz, like the boys, like the sessions, like it's just fun to be around. Like the environment's good. You learn, you develop, and yeah, the environment. Like you compete in good competition, even in the practices. Like the competition's very good. But yeah, I think the main thing is the environment that comes from the fans. It comes from the staff, the players, the chairman. Like overall, like the club's just fun to be in around. But I'd definitely say that. I know we already did like your favorite memory, but like what's your favorite memory from like just like a random practice session someone said something or oh. did something? <laughs> Maybe we can say that on okay. camera. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you can't say there's it. There's so fine. many. I mean, um, especially so many. that first year of fun was kinda like creating the main goals. thing, wasn't it? I mean we played football, dodgeball, soccer tennis, we've done penny yeah. tag, we've done also piggyback races, mm. you know, it, it's to, to get that. That's that's a tough one, but <laughs> Uh, uh, I like I like dodgeball when we had everybody. You had to get the penny. Yeah, the and that was the a fun one. At them. So and it was it was like an agility thing, and it was uh, yeah, stuff like that is fun. But yeah, that's that that's why that's why the guys come back because we make it that way, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'd say yeah, I'd say that. <laughs> like I'd say like the little the little fun games. I'd definitely say that's mm -hmm. up there. Like you said, that's what makes us come back. Like you have your college season, serious, serious, serious. Like don't get me wrong, like this is a serious place as well. But we have that fun element in it too. You know what I'm trying to say? Well, I'd definitely say that. Yeah, I think um, it's actually, yeah, it was asked this question too for uh, me. Like I just wrapped up my senior year of high school and I'm not playing in college. So um, they were like, oh, what's your favorite memory? And I mean, I ended up matching in the game because I don't want to be that loser that says all the practices. But um no, like, it was definitely just, uh, for me at least, in four years, you know, just playing every day after school with my best friends, I don't think anything will ever really beat that. And I made my best friends, like, freshman year, sophomore year on the fields there. So um, I think that's honestly, like, why this sport is so good, too, is just, you know, playing, like, out in the street and playing with my brothers growing up. So I don't think anything really, like, tops that feeling. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's why, you know, this game is the beautiful game, um, so they say. But... Yeah, I mean, that's all I have for you guys. I don't know if you have anything else to share or anything you want to say to all the listeners watching, maybe if your mom or dad's watching somewhere. But um, You got something to say? Yeah. Oh, I got um, nothing to say. Yeah. This anything? is awesome. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I again, thank you so much for coming on. And to everybody, um, you plug the golf outing. James does want us to say the, yeah. the golf outing. We'll put the picture right here. So make sure to go um, buy your bid for the golf outing. And, again, uh, fellas, thank you so much for coming on. Lucas. Thanks for, yeah. thanks for joining today. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, but without further ado, make sure to follow along FC Mammoth throughout the season at We Are Mammoth on social media. Uh, get your tickets, fcmammoth.com slash tickets. 
and just make sure to stay um, in tune with everything going on at the club. So thank you for watching. Make sure you join the 7 through 2. Make sure to join the 7 through 2. But without further ado, everybody, have a good one.